As it turns out, you've been thinking about net change ever since you started taking antiderivatives. You just didn't know it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The acceleration of a particle moving along the x-axis at time t is given by a of t equals 6t minus 2. If the velocity is 25 when t equals 3 and the position is 10 when t equals 1, then let's find our position function. Well, we are given the very bottom of our ladder, our acceleration function, and that's given by 6t minus 2. If I want to find the velocity function at any time t, all I have to do is take the antiderivative of acceleration. The antiderivative of 6t is 3t squared. The antiderivative of negative 2 is negative 2t. And of course, since I have no limits of integration and I'm taking an antiderivative, I have a family of antiderivatives and we have to include this plus c. We include the plus c because there are an infinite number of possibilities for our velocity function that when you take the derivative would yield this particular acceleration function. And the reason is because the derivative of c, some constant, is equal to zero. Well, let's plug zero into t and let's figure out what c really represents. When I plug zero into t, my velocity at zero, well we have zero minus zero plus c, Oh, look at that. That constant c, turns out, is our initial velocity, the velocity at time t equals zero. So in reality, I can rewrite my velocity as v of t is equal to my initial velocity plus the net change from zero to any time t of my acceleration function. Well this is in fact net change where here is my antiderivative from 0 to t of a of u du and of course I'm using a different uh, variable in a because I can't have the same t in there as well that'll make no sense plus my initial velocity right here so here we have our net change, which is the integral of acceleration, plus some actual value of velocity that will help me figure out what the true velocity is at any given moment. Now without this c, I can find the net change in velocity. However, without this initial velocity, I don't know what my actual velocity is. Case in point, Let's plug in t equals 1. If you plug in t equals 1, that means that 3 times t squared minus 2t, we have 3 minus 2, that's 1. So our net change from 0 to 1 is equal to 1. However, what if our velocity at time t equals 0 was negative 10? Well, that means that our new velocity at time one would be negative nine because the net change was one. So it depends on what your v naught is in order to determine what your actual velocity function value is. You can't just determine it from the net change. So let's keep going along this problem. In this problem, they told us that Velocity is 25 when t equals 3. That is some initial condition for velocity. So let's plug that in right now. Here we have 25 is equal to 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27 minus 2 times 3 is 6 plus c. So here 27 minus 6 is 21. 25 minus 21, that means that c is equal to 4. Let's plug that back into our velocity function. So here we have v of t is equal to 3t squared minus 2t plus 4. Well, this means that our initial velocity 
is 4. So for example, if I wanted to find the velocity at time t equals 1, I know that at time t equals 0, my velocity was 4, and the net change in my velocity is 3 minus 2 is 1, so my velocity at time t equals 1 would be 5. Or you can just plug 5 into v of t and you get you know, 3 minus 2 plus 4 it gives you 5. But the real reason behind that is net change plus initial condition. And that is the secret to all of these problems. Now let's go back up to position from velocity. So my position is equal to the antiderivative of velocity, which would be t cubed minus t squared plus 4t plus c. And once again, if you were to plug 0 into t, you would find that c would be your initial position. So once again, this c denotes the actual position at time 0 and everything else in here, this antiderivative, is the net change, is how much it changed from, from zero to wherever you want to go. And they told us that the position is 10 when t equals 1. So let's plug that in. We know that our position is 10 when t equals 1. That's 1 minus 1 plus 4 plus c. So 1 minus 1 is 0, plus 4 is 4, 10 minus 4 is 6, so that means that our initial position is 6. So let's plug that back in. Here we have x of t is equal to t cubed minus t squared plus 4t plus 6. And this right here is the answer to the problem. However, one more time, let's take a look at what this means. This is my initial position x naught. This in here is my change in position from zero to any time t, and we'll call that v of u du, since we don't want to call it t. So, for example, if we were to find the position at time t equals one, which they told us was 10, we know that my initial position is 6, and from 0 to 1, my change in position is 4. 4 plus 6 gives us 10. And that is how net change relates to our family of antiderivatives.